up just firstly, or was it, say welcome. <laughs> I'm going to get you off. On the pedestal, I know. We'll be cut that and one. And don't step on the eggs behind no, you. No, no, I wouldn't dream of that. Well, thank you very much for coming along. A nice, uh, small uh, crowd today. I say it was a bit of a change from last time, but it was uh, horrendous conditions. So um, it's uh, great to have you all along. Uh, I've got a bit of information to hand at this time. I normally do a handout. It gives a bit more the detail of what I'm um, looking to talk about today. So today we're looking at yeah, some of the common egg issues with uh, laying hands. Uh, and there's a few, and there's a few causes. Uh, and so we're really just trying to get a bit, uh, a bit clearer on, on what are some of those causes and what are some of the issues that happen with our, our hands. So to start off, we're going to look at some uh, examples that we've collected from the farm. Uh, we've got the soft shower pointy and the rough eggs. So we'll have a quick look at that, uh, those eggs. Which are here. Right. We were going to hard boil them, didn't happen. We ran out of time. Uh, and the exhibit A is the, I'll probably burst it here, is the shellless egg. So that's your shellless egg. I'll show it with the camera. It's really almost, it's not even quite silicon, is it? Thank you. Very, very, I'm really as a shellless egg. There's no calcium has been laid on that egg. And that's what we have. It's like a bag. Just like a sack that it's holding the, the yolk and the contents of that egg. So then we have our our rough egg, which is some very unusual ripples on this one. Uh, this is actually not too bad. I've seen a lot worse. Next is a pointy, like a pointy egg, and that's your elongated. Here's another one, elongated too, and it's a bit of a rough shell. So that's a very white colour to that egg. Here's one with some calcium deposits on the. Uh, on the outside of the shell. So the, the different egg issues that we have are the external and with our rough or deformed shell that we've seen. Uh, external again, the colour of the egg shell. Um, there's, there's some good reasons for that which I'll go through. The, uh, quite, a very, uh, quite a variation in egg shell colour. Uh, we've got the shape, we've got our pointy or elongated egg shell as well. And the size, so of course we've got an undersize, we've got a jumbo and we have the double yolk also. The internal uh, side of the egg, we've got our yolk colour, and that can vary a uh, uh, you know, large amount from quite a very pale white colour to the egg yolk through to a, quite an orange, a rich, almost a reddy orange colour. Egg white as well, the albumin, uh, is also very important, and it's actually measured how thick the albumin is in your egg white. So, who thinks there's a relation between the colour of the yolk and the nutritional value of that egg? Or the, the pale one, is it you know, less nutritious? No idea. Oh no idea, no, that's good, good. That's the sort of answer I love. No idea. <laughs> oh, it comes from me. But anyway, no, there's none. There's no relationship whatsoever between the uh, the colour of the yolk. Nothing whatsoever. Um, it's really a marketing ploy though, because I say, uh, all your eggs in the supermarket, normally that yolk is a very dark uh, orange, even from cages. It's hard to get colour into your yolk if you don't have grass uh, or a lot of corn, a lot of the, uh, so the yellow or the green in the diet. Uh, that's not very common, obviously I'm certainly not the cage, it's in grass. Uh, but the corn also, they don't use corn so much because it is an expensive ingredient and all, as, along with chopped lucerne. So without those you won't, you won't get a, a strong colour. So they add a, an additive into the feed and that colours up that yolk. So we'll go into the reasons for poor egg quality. Uh, the number one of course is the breed. The breed of your chicken is the most important thing when it comes to egg quality and the, obviously the production too. And there's a huge range between the pure breeds, of course, and all the different uh, range of pure breeds. They can lay very, very poorly, a lot of them, but um, all of them lay far less than the commercial layers. The eyes are in the highline brown, um, and the, the highline is the, the most prolific layer. So it's the it's a, it's a biggest egg laying chicken in the world at the moment, worldwide. Uh, and it lays in the, in the right system up to 360 eggs in its first season. Nutrition is also a really important area. Poor feed, feed, or the wrong feed, for the breed of bird, of the age, should I say, of bird. Uh, gut development is really important uh, for layers in particular, that they have a, a course of feed. All right, so it's one thing with your feed, is really important for your layers. Um, supported reason why, with our feed, you can see that coarseness there. You've got all those components. You still use a roller mill, it's still chopped up, they're not the whole components, like a whole corn, uh, kernel of corn. Um, because that, that is a bit hard for them to digest and they'll tend to pass a lot of that nutrition through the gut um, and outside. So um, when it's rolled in with the right particle uh, size, you'll tend to get a much better 
uh, result it slows down the absorption of the nutrients in, in the feed. Now your pellets, you don't tend to get that so much. So a palleted feed isn't quite so good for your layer breeds. The reason for that is the pellet, is, uh, all of them, it's all been crushed into a, like a powder and it's fused together with the, the heat and pressure process that forms the pellet. So w when that gets uh, eaten by the bird, uh, it pretty much dissolves almost in the gut. You find if you're using pellets in your layers, you'll need to use supplement with a, uh, a limestone grit or a shell grit. Um, of, a, of a larger particle size. So something that you already find in, like for example, our feed, we still have that grit in there, really, really important. With the pellets, it will slow down the absorb absorption of the nutrients from the pellet. The medullary bone, a unique bone. <laughs> so funny, what's so funny? Eh? <laughs> <laughs> medullary, it's a very important bone formation and it's basically a suppositor uh, repository. <laughs> it's a repository <laughs> for calcium. Not a, not a calcium suppository, I'd be very uncomfortable. Um, so what it does is it, it absorbs calcium, all right, and, it, and, which is then used for egg, egg shell formation, all right? <laughs> it's only found in female birds, all right, and crocodiles, and of course dinosaurs, which we all knew anyway, didn't we? So yeah, so, and it's used yeah, so for egg shell formation, uh, it's where that, that calcium is held and stored uh, ready for the eggshell uh, formation. It only comes into existence though, that bone only starts to grow just before they start to lay is when that bone becomes present uh, and throughout the laying period. Uh, prior to that, the, that bone is, uh, there's no, uh, the bone isn't there, it's, it doesn't form at that, that age when they're younger. Um, so below sort of about three and a half, four months of age in most chickens. So you have to be very mindful of that because your feed is critical. Uh, like for our feed, for example, or any layer uh, feed, you're going to have a high, a reasonable calcium content, three, three and a half, four percent calcium. If you start giving that to your young chickens, it's going to be deposited in their liver and other organs, and it's going to cause issues with that. Too much, and it will cause mortality in your in your birds. So uh, you don't want to be adding that, that calcium or having a high high calcium feed, which you'd have for for a layer uh, for birds that aren't aren't in lay yet. Diseases, right? There's the infectious bronchitis, a common uh, poultry disease, and something that egg farmers always try and keep on top of. Uh, it is vaccinated for, but you need to top it up now and again. You don't really have to worry about it at home. Um, you can just let them sort of get through that disease. If they've been vaccinated, they won't die or anything, um, and they'll get through that. Infectious laryngotracheitis is another easily pronounced name that uh, ILT, we'll call it for short. And that's a common, it's quite a high mortality disease, and that can also cause your rough egg shells and your yolk colour can be go very, very pale with that particular one. Uh, it's a bit of a worry because it, it, it's airborne and it can travel for about two and a half kilometres in the air. So, uh, often from broiler farms where they have the meat chickens, uh, often they won't tend to vaccinate their birds because it's expensive and the birds are only there for five to seven weeks before they are off to be processed and head off to KFC. So. The, the trucks taking those birds will often have ILT and um, if they're going past your road or they're within two, two and a half kilometres of your birds, you can pick it up quite easily. All the wind's blowing in your direction. So uh, it, it actually kills a lot of birds. Uh, a, lot of, uh, a lot of backyarders can be affected by it too. Quite a high mortality. How can you know when the bird's got the disease? Like what's the, what's the Some of the signs, uh, certainly with um, ILT, uh, is sort of a gasping for air because it's an infection in their throat. Yeah. Um, there's lesions in their throat and they, uh, it affects the, the breathing and the, uh, uh, quite, quite um, a lot. You can also get, also get sweaty necks, a bit of a sweaty neck to them. So they're constantly gasping and they tend to, uh, yeah, they get a bit of moisture on their necks too. So is there any, any, any treatment or preventative treatment? Or? No, the main thing is that your birds are vaccinated and they'll, they'll normally go through it. Burns out in about 10 days, um, ILT. Uh, you know, we notice on the egg farm because again, when you have larger numbers, you know, we've got a thousand odd birds, they come in at um, uh, IOT hits, and then you start, you know, one bird uh, dies, then it's two, then it's three, then it's four, then it's seven, and then it drops off again, and it burns itself out. The disease burns itself out. And the others, they've been able to fight it off, and because they've been vaccinated, so uh, rather than losing 20% of your birds, you only lose just a fraction. Then it's really, I mean, a vet would let really, you know. I mean, in the backyard, uh, you you can't do much. You just got to make sure that your birds are vaccinated, and then you you know you're covered uh, as 
far as possible. So we have our um, parasites, of course. Parasites, worms, lice, and mites, they all cause uh, yeah, a lot of egg issues. And that's the first thing that we look for um, when Juliana's grading the eggs, looking at the eggs, uh, she immediately knows what's going on. Just by the, uh, she just knows, notice the rough eggs are starting to come in, or a white shell, or, um, or some uh, pointy eggs, and she straight away she says, you know, when did you last win the birds? And then I've got to get in and just uh, make sure, you know, have a look at the spreadsheet, find out when I last win the birds, and off I go and get those, um, re, re win them again. It's a good idea to change your worm now and again too. Sometimes worms can get a little bit resistant to one wormer of one type or another. Uh, there's piperazine and there's levamisole, the two wormers that are approved for use with egg laying birds. So you need to keep them on top of your parasites. Uh, temperature, we're coming to the high temperature, uh, you know, summer, very soon. As in tom well, not tomorrow, is it? No, it's Thursday, I think, which is summer, aren't we? So you have to watch your temperature. The high temperature, the birds will often, uh, with a bit of heat stress, they will tend to lay less. They will also tend to have a runny white. So you want to be collecting your eggs and getting them into the uh, into the fridge as quickly as possible. Otherwise, you tend to get a very uh, very runny egg white. Uh, and that's something that we uh, really focus on in the winter, is trying to get those eggs out of the nest as quickly as possible. In uh, the summer. To avoid that. In the summer. Yeah, so. In the summertime. Well, whenever it's really hot anyway. It's really important to do that. Uh, you have to get your egg issues. They'll lay less, and sometimes they'll even drop down in egg size. It can happen too. You know, watermelon's a great thing, way of uh, uh, keeping them cool and make sure there's plenty of fresh water available for them. Uh, your old hens too, old hens, young, young hens. So old hens, uh, they, naturally, they, they lay a bigger egg, a larger egg, and they've only got so much calcium that they can spread over that egg. So you're going to get issues with the, your thinner wheat, uh, egg shell. So it was a yeah, it had the older bird. You, you, you do find that they struggle to cover that egg uh, properly with a good thick layer of calcium when they get older. And in fact, when you get an older bird, it's a good idea to, to provide some extra shell grit for them uh, of a larger particle size. And that just helps to slow down the absorption of a lot of nu nutrition in, the, in their gut too, even if they've been fed a mash. Uh, they just find it a little bit harder to absorb the nutrition. So having them um, having a, like a separate uh, feeder with the shell grit uh, or the limestone grit can be really beneficial for older birds uh, as they age and help with your egg quality. Do you want to explain um, the difference between limestone grit and shell grit, or yeah? Okay, so limestone grit is, is more commonly used these days. It has the calcium that the, the, the birds need. Uh, shell grit used to be used a lot in the old days. It's still fine, works very well, but it's a finite resource. The shell grit, you know, as, as you can imagine, so it's kind of people steering away from that and uh, and using more limestone grit, which um, is just more plentiful. Young birds, they've got an immature shell gland. Right? It takes them a little while to get into the swing of things. Uh, you get your double yolkers, of course, because uh, they're firing out two eggs um, and they're trying to form a shell there to, to cover those, great big shell to, to cover those two, two, uh, two eggs or yolks. And you get your double yolkers. So they haven't worked out their cycle properly yet. This takes uh, two or three weeks to get things you know, sorted out. And then they start to get a bit of consistency and you, you stop getting your double yolkers, unfortunately. I know a lot of people love those, but just a percentage thing. And only really with the young birds. It doesn't tend to persist into the, you know, with older birds. Yeah. Uh, behaviour, stress, pecking order. Um, the pecking order, you have a lot, of, uh, a lot of negative things with your pecking order. For birds that haven't been beak trimmed too, when they've got the sharp hook, you'll get a bit more, um, you'll get some more issues with your eggs. You get a lot whiter, paler eggs. We had some birds here with their full beaks and... It's a hard learn, no lesson that we learned, but uh, we, not only the cannibalism, but uh, the birds had very pale eggs, very, very white shelled eggs. Uh, and that's a condition, they're, they're constantly in a, in a state of stress. They don't know when they're going to be eaten by the, their, their friend. So you just you find that the egg shell colour really gets affected badly by that. So you may have that if you have full big birds, if you have a flock of four or five uh, that are under stress, you find you'll get a, a much whiter um, egg shell. And also, I say, you've, if you have the, the more boisterous, uh, the, the one at the top of the pecking order, they'll be picking on those others, and those others may sh show some signs of a, of a white egg shell as well. Um, yeah, but they're, they're lower down in that hierarchy. So your, he your housing system, you know, your backyard free range hens, you'll just tend to get lighter coloured color, uh, eggs. You'll, they will be a bit whiter compared to uh, your completely uh, environmentally controlled hens in the factory farms where everything's very controlled, it's 21 degrees, constant temperature, everything's regulated, nothing, it doesn't get too hot, it never gets too cold, 
and they, they you just have a consistent brown egg that comes out of there. Just expect lighter shells, and that's normal.